Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss here now on the news for October 9th, 2020. With Walt Disney World closed for so long due to the pandemic, Walt Disney World offered annual pass holders, extensions, cancellations, and refunds. Now Disney is emailing pass holders on monthly payment plans who chose an extension, asking them to confirm the extension and schedule of payments on an amended contract. The email asks guests to follow these steps. Link your annual pass to your Disney account in My Disney Experience if you have not done so already. Click to consent to the use of an electronic signature and follow the instructions after providing consent to sign your amendment and finalize your extension. This electronic signature is required before November 1st, 2020, or the extension will be canceled. Anyone with questions or needing assistance could call 888-701-4100 to speak to a Disney representative. Park hours have been posted for Walt Disney World theme parks now through Saturday, December 26th. Hours for the parks through then are as follows. The Magic Kingdom is uh, 9 to 7, Epcot noon to 8, Hollywood Studios 10 to 7, and Animal Kingdom 9 to 5 on that new added week. Hours of the Magic Kingdom remain extended from November 6th with the new 7 p.m. close. That being said, all of this is about to become pretty much null and void when I move on to the next story. And the next story is that pretty much most days coming up that they've extended park hours at most parks. The park hour extensions vary by date and by park. Here's a quick rundown. On the, at the Magic Kingdom, October 30th is now 9 to 8. October 31st, Halloween is now 9 to 9. Remember 9 to 9, kids? November 1st, 9 to 8. November 6th through the 21st, now 9 to 8 as well. November 22nd through the 28th is 9 to 9. November 29th and 30th, 9 to 8. Uh, December 1st through the 19th, 9 to 8 p.m. Epcot has extended on October 30th from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Halloween from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Getting excited here. November 1st, 11 to 9. November 6th through the 21st from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. November 22nd through the 28th, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. November 29th and 30th, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. And December 1st through the 3rd, 7th through the 10th, 14th through the 17th, and the 20th through the 26th uh, on weekdays, 12 to 9. And December 4th through the 6th, 11 to the 13th, and 18th to 19th. Those are weekends, 11 to 9. At Hollywood Studios, there are no park hour changes. Whatever. Meanwhile, at Animal Kingdom on October 30th, they're open from 8 to 6. On October 31st, get this, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. November 1st, 8 to 6. November 6th through the 8th, 13th through the 15th, 20th and 21st, and the 29th, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And November 22nd through the 28th, they're open from 8 a.m. to get this, 8 p.m. This is great. Now, maybe you could just bring back a bunch of these cast members who are on furlough now that you have all these extended hours and people showing up. The lunching pad in Magic Kingdom's Tomorrowland has been closed since the park reopened in mid-July, but after an announcement last week, the quick service restaurant is finally reopened. No special menu items were added during the closure. Like some other quick service restaurants, the lunching pad is now almost exclusively mobile order. There are social distancing markers for guests waiting in each mobile order pickup line. There are three mobile order pickup windows. A sign at the location lets guests know exactly how to mobile order, and there are some self-serve utensils and condiment stations. There's one register open for guests with specific dietary restrictions or discounts who need to order in person. Social distancing markers uh, for this register run several yards past the Astro Orbiter elevator, but if you want those, those filled pretzels, here you go. Lunching pad's back. It is with deepest pride and greatest pleasure that we welcome you tonight to the reopening of Chefs de France in the France Pavilion at Epcot. That's right, they are back. We sat down for lunch to enjoy the restaurant's delicious French cuisine, and we're taking you along for the meal. Uses a makeshift seating area up until now, the Chefs de France entrance is now set up to welcome guests with a menu on display and plexiglass mounted to the host stand. The menu has been pared down a bit, but it still features many guest favorites, like the French onion soup, the uh, beef bouillon, I can never say that, and the creme brulee. There is a fixed uh, menu called the menu... I'm going to butcher this. Menu Frances, available for $49.50. That's what we did, Josh and myself, went and reviewed. We both did this with different items, and we have a full review for you at WWNT.com if you want to check it out. Anyone can cook, and that includes single riders, too. New entrance signage has been installed at Remy's Ratatouille Adventure in Epcot, including entryways for Fast Pass Plus, Single Rider, and Standby. We've been checking on the location on a near daily basis uh, for the impending arrival of new signage, and so far we've seen signs go up for Le Creperie de Paris, the France Pavilion uh, expansions uh, table and quick service edition. 
Considering that the attraction's original version in Walt Disney Studios Park, Ratatouille, L'Aventure Totalement Toque de Remy, I'm sure I butchered that also, had single rider, it really wasn't a surprise that it showed up here. However, it's interesting to note that at Disneyland Paris, the Fast Pass Plus entrance is on the left side, the single rider entrance in the middle. Here they're swapped, and it goes in the following order from left to right. Single riders, Fast Pass, standby. Of course, single rider and Fast Pass lines not currently in use um, at Walt Disney World, but nonetheless, they were installed here because, you know, this was planned before the ongoing situation, right? Of course, this attraction was originally scheduled to open in the summer of 2020, but has been delayed, and Disney is still yet to say when this attraction might open. And I know we spoke to management at Chef's uh, de France, and they did not know when they might be opening the uh, crepe restaurant either, but they're hopeful that Disney will allow them to do so very soon. From fireworks tests and tech crew surveys to aerial photos of the construction site, news continues to swirl around Harmonious, the upcoming new nighttime spectacular for Epcot that will take place on the World Showcase Lagoon. Large barges are currently being constructed backstage, and the barges themselves will host a bevy of multimedia features, including large screens. We were able to see the current progress during a flight on the Disney Skyliner, including breathtaking views of the show's main circular centerpiece barge, which is definitely bigger than I thought it was going to be. That is... That is massive. Looks like a Stargate. Now erected and mounted into its base, the centerpiece of Harmonious will soon, or rather once the show eventually debuts, be outfitted with a massive screen to showcase beloved scenes from Disney and Pixar films. As seen in concept art renderings for, at the Epcot Experience, the center barge will have a lighted arm uh, flanking each side. Along the edges, laser lights and more effects. And from the Disney Skyliner, it appears as if the massive Stargate has been erected in the backstage of Epcot. Recently caught a glimpse at work on the other four barges as well that will accompany this one. As with Remy, we don't know if and when this show will debut. I assume it will debut at some point since they're still working on it. A Waffles booth has opened at the Taste of the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival just in time for Columbus Day weekend. This is the most recent latecomer to this year's festival. should be the last one uh, with the donut box and the cool wash returning last weekend. Most festival booths have been operating since the park reopened in mid-July. This booth seems to be a pared-down version of the Belgium booth, which is, of course, known for its waffles. This year, the menu includes the Belgian waffle with warm chocolate ganache and whipped cream for $4.25, the Belgian waffle with berry compote and whipped cream for $4.25, and the original Sin Brewery Black Widow Hard Cider for $4.50 or $8.50 for the bigger size. The Halloween season is in full swing here at Walt Disney World, and with it comes a number of treats. There are some new ones we've reviewed, including the Frightfully Spooky Strawberry Shortcake Push Pop, which has lurked its way into Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. This is a black vanilla shortcake with strawberry filling topped with a violet cream, a neon green frosting, and orange and white sprinkles. It sells for $4.99. can be picked up at P&J Southern Takeout. Check out our website for the review. You can bring the spirit of Halloween season to your mouth with these frightfully delicious treats. The Jack Skellington Jumbo Pumpkin King Cake Pop. Say that five times fast. The Bewitching Mini Cupcake. The Sally Whoopie Pie Hearts. And the Zero Dog Bone Eclair are all available now at Gasparilla Island Grill, Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. Priced at $7.99, fans of the Nightmare Before Christmas will be delighted by that Jack Skellington Pumpkin Spice Cake Pop. At $5.59, there's the adorable mini witch cupcake adorned with chocolate witch hat and Oreo ears. Priced at $4.99, the Sally Whoopie Pie hearts are sure to bring Halloween to the Instagram feed of fans. And finally, priced at $5.49, the Zero Dog Bone Eclairs are adding even more Nightmare Before Christmas spirit to Walt Disney World. Read our full review of all of those as well at WDWNT.com. Cross beams are being removed from the iconic roof of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort as the hotel receives a major refurbishment. Now a portion of the central horizontal beam has been trimmed. Cross beams have been removed from the left side of the structure and while the right side uh, still hasn't been touched at this point. A portion of the horizontal beam leading to the first vertical support has been sawed off. This is terrible. The roof will still maintain a cross beam structure as seen in the concept art, but it's possible all the old beams will be removed in favor of new ones. That or they're just shortening this thing. We don't really know yet, but um, this is scary. I mean, obviously that's been that way since 1971. Um, I, I think the roof just looks bare. I'm hoping they're just going to put up a whole new one instead of shortening this, because if it's shortened, it just leaves a lot of dead roof space. It's real weird. Walt Disney World has released an update to travel agents regarding suites at Disney Resort Hotels. Walt Disney World Resort Hotel suites are now available to book. However, club level service currently remains unavailable. Any room category designated as club level or having club level access 
uh, including suites, will not include club level service until further notice. Guests and travel agents with existing club access suite reservations are currently being contacted by the Reservation Center to inform them of their options. The Reservation Center will be making these calls on a rolling basis, and those impacted will be contacted approximately 30 to 60 days prior to their arrival. Disneyland Resort's Chief Medical Officer Dr. Pamela Himmel has clapped back at Governor Newsom in response to claims earlier that reopening the resort's theme parks is unsafe based on science and data. Her full statement on behalf of the division can be found on our website. You're looking at it now. When asked about Bob Iger's sudden leave from the Governor's Economic Advisory Council, Newsom revealed earlier that it was due to disagreements over reopening guidelines. Quote, there's disagreements in terms of opening a major theme park. We're going to let science and data make that determination. I understand the dialectic, the friction that many business, business leaders have that they want to move forward, but they're going to be led by a health first, health first framework, and we're going to be stubborn about it. Governor Newsom stated that California is in no hurry to issue reopening dates or guidelines, stating science will guide any announcement on when or how it will be safe to reopen major theme parks. Last week, it seemed that the theme park reopening guidelines were going to be issued. However, there was backlash from the parks, ultimately leading to postponement. By the way, through all this, Governor Gavin Newsom's winery in California has remained open. Glad that's safe, though. Yep, people with masks off drinking wine inside. Much safer. While Walt Disney World's Phase 3 opening is well underway, the Disneyland Resort's reopening remains stalled, with hotel cancellations now extended through October 24th. Guests with existing reservations have begun to receive emails notifying them of the cancellation. Orange County Healthcare Agency officials have visited Disneyland, California Venture, and Downtown Disney to observe the health and safety protocols that have been put in place. Following the tour, Disneyland is implementing several recommendations from the officials, including adding Spanish language signs with health and safety information, placing social distancing markers outside of restrooms, and installing more hand sanitizing stations and attractions. Orange County Health Care Agency recently gave their approval for Disneyland to reopen. Disneyland has been butting heads with, of course, Gavin Newsom about the reopening, though, even despite this. According to DLP report, Disneyland Paris will be introducing a new tiered pricing system for pass holder privilege tickets starting November 6th. There will be a low season and high season tier uh, from November 6th through March 31st, 2021. The Infinity ticket will now be 37 euros for low season and 52 euros for high season. Magic Plus will increase to 42 euros for low season and 57 for high season. The following dates will be considered high season, November 7th, 8th, 14th, 15th, 21st, 22nd, 28th, and 29th, December 5th, 6th, 12th, 13th, 19th, uh, all the way to the 31st, and January 1st to the 3rd, as well as February 13th, 20th, 27th, and March 6th, 13th, 14th, 20th, 21st, 27th, and 28th. In the past few years, several theme parks have switched to similar season tiered pricing, including Disneyland and Walt Disney World. If you've ever seen pictures of the merchandise they sell at Tokyo Disney Resort, you've probably seen some of those big fluffy hats with different character motifs. They're particularly great for keeping your head and ears warm in the chilly Tokyo winters. So the Oriental Land Company is introducing more of these fluffy fan caps. Each of these will be available starting November 4th across the resort for 2,900 yen or about $27.44 each. U.S. dollars, that is. Toy Story fever never ends at the Disney parks worldwide, and Tokyo is no exception. In that spirit, TDR has unveiled three new pass cases themed to Woody, Buzz, and Jesse's original toy packaging. Each of these are available across the resort for 2,000 yen, about 1889 US. All cases are available now across the resort, so be sure to pick one up on your next visit if you're allowed into Japan. Last week, Last week, the new Fantasyland expansion flung open its gates at Tokyo Disneyland, and along with the incredible village shops across the way, Bell's Village also features meticulously detailed interpretations of uh, many things, including the tavern from the iconic film, uh, named La Taverne de Gaston. And while we were able to try and review all the food on opening day, actually entering the tavern itself was an entirely different story until now. We are finally able to go inside, and it's covered not only in antlers, but also details and references to characters major and minor throughout the movie. Be sure to check out our full tour right here on YouTube. While we wait for the Voices of Liberty to make their triumphant return to the American Adventure at Epcot, we can hear from members of the vocal group in a brand new album from Voctave, The Corner of Broadway and Main Street, Volume 2. The follow-up to their 2017 album features timeless Disney classics and hits from Broadway and cinema, including an amazing Epcot team-up with their fellow mainstay, Mariachi Cobre. You can stream or purchase a digital copy of the album on Amazon, Apple Music, or listen to it on Spotify. While the Voices of Liberty may not be back at the parks just yet, they did create some recordings during the months-long stretch where the parks were closed, including a stirring rendition of America the Beautiful on Memorial Day. 
Currently, the group is scheduled to return to Epcot for the holiday season with seasonal themed performances at the America Gardens Theater. This album is spectacular. The opening track, the Disney medley, features wishes and spectro magic and illuminations. And, oh, it's if you're a Disney fan, you're going to cry. It is magical. The, the team up with Mariachi Cobre is amazing. Even, um, not my favorite song from Frozen, but they have a beautiful cover of a Frozen 2 song. It is, this is a must own. It's, it's really, really absolutely perfect. The Rivers of Light Night Tim Spectacular may be gone forever, but it does seem that it's getting a nod within My Disney Experience where a new Magic Band designed after the show is available as a pre-arrival exclusive. The Rivers of Light Magic Band comes at a special price of $20, down from $29.99, and is available for pass holders with pending Magic Band orders or guests with an upcoming Disney Resort hotel stay. How weird. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next magical Disney trip. The best part is that their services are free. Hotel, park tickets, uh, dining, and more. Visit www.nt.travel for details. The Vacationeer, the official travel agency of WDWNT. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, make sure to hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. Also, don't forget to visit the Carousel of Products where we have brand new products. These campaign magnets for the Orange Garage and the Lime Garage at Disney Springs. Show your support for which garage you think is better with these $5 magnets for your car, for your fridge, whatever. They're available at CarouselProducts.com right now. Pick them up. For the Worldwide Leader in Disney Parks News, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. And vote orange. Hi everyone, I'm Cosmic Chris Reed inviting you to join my co-hosts and I every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern on WDW News Today as we chat Disney Park memories, food, and Imagineer our own attractions, restaurants, hotels, and more. Share your stories with us in the YouTube chat. Plus, listen to WDWN tunes at the same time to hear some Disney Park music paired with the show topics. Cosmic Reed Live every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on WDW News Today.